start on this. Hi, everyone, and welcome to... Let me start that over again. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us on the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and today I have Adam Sonhalter with me. Adam grew up uh, in the family business, spent the first decade of his career working on Wall Street, helping people buy and sell companies. He started Maximum Value Partners in 2003 with his business partner and has been helping small businesses succeed ever since. Adam, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Michael. Great to be here. Awesome. Let's just dive right in here. Why did you become a coach, Adam? Well, it's, it's one of those things. I don't know if you become a coach or maybe you're kind of born that way. As I've kind of looked back in my in my life and my career, I've always been in roles where I've been a, been a mentor to people, you know, whether it be in uh, informal stuff or even when, when I started my career, even very young in my career, people would always come to me for guidance and advice and, and, and ways to do things differently or better. I've always enjoyed kind of doing that and helping people that way. So I think I've, I've always kind of done coaching and, and different facets and, and I guess kind of made it official back in 2003 when we started Maxim Value Partners as, as business coaches. Awesome. And what are you doing in your coaching business today that's unique? Well, one of the things that's been unique for our, our practice since the beginning is we do all of our, our, our coaching two-on-one. So both my partner and I will will coach our clients, and part of what that does is it, it gives you know obviously two sets of eyes and ears, but also our styles, our backgrounds, our experiences, and ages are very different as well. So it enables us to very quickly to connect very naturally, very easily with somebody quickly for for one of us for sure, but also gives people in between you know, as part of what we do with our coaching is we're available twenty four seven in between, and so when they reach out to, t- to touch base, they can reach out to 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 two people, you know, so it gives them that that benefit of having that as well. Uh, and, and keeps our energy level, you know, very strong. For, for those uh, folks who are doing it on their own, they can appreciate, you know, trying to do it all on their own versus having somebody together to kind of help, you know, share that burden. If I'm not quite feeling it that day, Jack will be there to kind of pick me up and vice versa. So that's one of the things that, that we find pretty unique from that standpoint. I guess another u- unique thing is we've had quite a few of our, of our clients successfully be able to sell themselves as well. Mm-hmm. And given my background with Wall Street, as you mentioned there at the opening, plus my partner, Jack, he's personally bought, fixed up and sold five companies. Uh, we're very unique to help position, help our clients that when they do, when the time is right to sell, when they get that offer that, that they can't refuse, to help them through that to help, you know, help them make that actually a reality and, and not make any missteps along the way as well. I love that. I saw there are many times where I wish I had someone to, you know, jump in and take care of my work for me on a day if I'm not feeling super great. Right. <laughs> I like that. How do you find your clients? Well, usually we find them kind of frustrated and confused and uh, upset, right? <laughs> but they're kind of worn out. But you know, true of many small, smaller companies, Michael, you know, referrals by far are, are the number one way that, that we get business. So those folks who already know I can trust us, whether it be friends, family, you know, current, past clients. In addition to that, we also have a podcast ourselves we've been doing now for about five years called Dirty Secrets of Small Business. And that's been uh, good for some some leads for us, as well as we have a an email database that we've built up over the years. So again, being a business now for, for, for almost 20 years, we kind of build that up as well. That's helped, you know, back in the days when we, you know, used to be able to go to trade shows, you know, trade shows were pretty good for us as well. And we do a number of speaking gigs, which is now transitioned to be more virtual as opposed to in person, but those seem to be you know, pretty good in terms of getting, getting leads for us as well, in terms of finding clients from that standpoint. Uh, I seem to recall something about trade shows and conferences. It feels like a lifetime ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. Oh, it's like, wait, was, that, was that something that I saw on Netflix somewhere? Or is it, you know, was that really happening? Yeah, right. Yeah. right. right. <laughs> that's, that's great, Adam. What, what is the biggest challenge that you face as a coach? Well, for us, you know, part of what we've been trying to get to the last several years is trying to build the marketing machine. You know, as I mentioned before, you know, referrals have been a big part of our growth and, if the goal for us was to keep uh, Jack and myself busy, we could kind of do that through referrals. But part of what we're trying to do is we're trying to reach thousands and thousands of people and to help you know that. And we, we have a bunch of coaches we know that we can bring into the fold, but it's trying to get the marketing machine down to be able to, to, to deliver good qualified candidates. And so part of what we, we've been working on over the years we've been doing, it, but it's you know, adjusted here in the last year with, with COVID is we've engaged a lot of folks on the outside to help us you know, with different marketing activities. And we're starting to get into some more stuff now in terms of LinkedIn and some of some the online stuff this year, which we're, which we're excited about. Uh, so we'll see how that kind of goes. But trying to get the marketing machine down where it's not just based on referrals has been probably the biggest gating item for us in terms of trying to grow the business. I like it. And moving on to question number five, if you had a do-over in your coaching business, what would that be? Well, we focus a lot, well, on the one-to-one or really kind of the, two to, the, the two-on-one stuff. And mm-hmm. we've gone recently more towards that one-to-many model. So whether it be doing different workshops or we've, we've just launched some mastermind groups, kind of sounding board type groups of you know four to six people. I wish we had kind of done that sooner. We talked about it for a while 
And it wasn't until the pandemic hit where you know, we, we got all the excuses out of the way by trying to find a location to meet and take care of all the stuff. We said, hey, we can just do this thing on something like Zoom. Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, we got our first group launched in the fall and it's been fantastic. And, and you know, I wish we had started that a little earlier because what happens is we're able to help more people that way. Uh, not everybody is uh, ready for it, or they can, can can they necessarily afford the investment for the the, the one to ones, but the, the groups are much more affordable and gives us a chance to kind of be able to help more people that way. So so we're excited about that, and I guess I wish we'd started that a little earlier in our in our uh, our journey. Twenty twenty was a strange year for many people. I'm glad to hear that you were able to take at least part of that and and turn it turn it for good. Absolutely, it was it was it was a, it was, a, it was a good year. I think a lot of good stuff came out of it for everybody. They, they just haven't focused on it quite yet, Michael. I think we've all been focused more on the negatives and a lot of things you read and see. You know, within the news is often negative, but there's a lot of positive that, that have kind of come out of it. Many mm -hmm. of our clients had record years last year. Again, it forced a lot of changes that they were maybe waiting on. That when you don't have any other choice, you got to make a decision. And so, you know, some some of us need to be forced or kicked in the butt a little bit to make some of those those changes yeah i gotta light that fire under your ass right. <laughs> I'm, I'm not i'm not dissimilar <laughs> awesome bonus question what is right. one book what is one book that you recommend all your clients read well the thing that probably started for us was e-myth you know the, you know, the e-myth revisited by, by michael gerber and that kind of sparked it for us but i guess the one we kind of use the most or maybe even quote the most would be good to great uh, by Jim Collins. You know, those are probably two of our favorite that, that, that we make sure people kind of read and, and want to be able to see. I know they're becoming oldies and goodies at this point. I think e is probably 45 years old at this point. I think good to great is even probably 20 plus years. But there, there's some great lessons that are in there that, 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 we, that we go to all the time and just do a good job of resonating and, and taking maybe some complex ideas and making them relatively simple. I love it. Yeah, good to great. Actually, you, this is this is an audio I podcast, it right. but it's, yeah. it's right there and right, right below there. it there is, is great by choice. All right. So, yeah. So I'm looking at my bookshelf over there. I, I can see him. Yeah, I got it. Okay. I see it both places. Good. I love it. <laughs> awesome. Adam, do you have, uh, is there anything you would like to uh, pitch or promote here real quick and where can people connect with you online? Okay. Yeah. Like, like I said, you know, our podcast, we're about five years into it. We were at episode, I think 256, 257 right now. It's called Dirty Secrets of Small Business. So if people want to go to the website, it's called Dirty Secrets of Small Business. Uh, we got a Facebook page, or if you, you listen to a lot of podcasts, you can go to use whatever your favorite devices and go subscribe to it uh, right there as well. Our coaching business is MaximumVP.com. Then you can learn more about us and kind of what we do there. But like I said, you know, a big push for us this year is going to be you know, launching more of these small groups. Again, it's between four and six people, and it's keeping it simple. You know, bring your biggest uh, challenge or opportunity to, to the group every month. You get 20 or 30 minutes to kind of go through that. Uh, you get a half hour one-to-one -one with Jack and I in between to kind of touch base in that, but it's a way to kind of maybe get started if you aren't sure if, if coaching's you know, for you, it's kind of a good, good way to kind of ease into it, but it's also a way to get folks to talk to about stuff. You know, if you're looking for people to talk to about stuff and not all sounding boards are created equally, right? So as you're looking at, you know, people you want to talk to, folks who've kind of been there and done it, who have some good experience and to be in a room full of peers is what, is, is what we're doing there. So you got some folks who get it, understand it as much as your spouse, you know, you know, might want to listen to you or your, your, your siblings or, or whoever, uh, to have folks who are, who are peers is, 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 I think, very, very key. And so that's something that, that we're very excited to get launched in a much bigger way this year. Awesome. Well, Adam, thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Coffee with Coaches. And thank you to our audience for tuning in. We'll see you next time. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me, Michael. Cheers.